Could it be? It's a what's in my camera bag video. What's up guys? My name is Caleb Bronco. I'm a photographer and filmmaker based here in South Florida. And this, well, this is what's in my camera bag. The what's in my camera bag genre of videos on YouTube has become a huge cliche. And I figured what better way to start this channel off than with a massive cliche because I too am a cliche. <laughs> so why don't we just jump right into it? First things first, the camera bag I use. This is the Low Pro Pro Tactic 450 AW2. That's a mouthful. I bought it, well I bought it like t almost two years ago and it is still the best bag that I've ever used. I see no reason to upgrade. It does everything that I need it to do. It has so many little tactile spaces for things, like a little tripod mount, it has a nice, hard top so you don't damage anything. And one of my favorite things is it opens from the back. So when you're wearing it, nobody can like steal your stuff, even though it does open from other parts. So I guess they could, if they were sneaky, they could probably get it. It has just a ton of compartments. Like you get all of these up here, you can fit a laptop up here. And yeah, that is my bag of choice. And now moving on to the gear that goes inside that bag. I shoot Canon. I always have since I started, they do, what I want, when I want them. My main camera that I shoot with is the EOS R6. I was gonna get the R5, but the more I looked at it, it, it was more of a want than a need. I don't need 8K, I don't need 45 megapixels, I'm not blowing anything up that big. The R6 perfectly suits my needs for everything that I do. It absolutely crushes. It's basically a 1DX Mark III for almost a third of the price, which if that doesn't sell it to you, I don't know, what will. I'd probably buy three R6s before I bought one 1DX Mark III. It does everything that I need it to do and it shoots 10 bit for everything, which is a nightmare to edit, let me tell you that. <laughs> you have to make proxies and then your computer crashes and then you have to call Adobe and then Adobe's like, that shouldn't happen. And then it keeps crashing and then your computer shuts down and then you have to call Apple about four times in a month. So that's fun. Other than that, it absolutely crushes. It does 4K 60, 1080p 120, all with full autofocus. It has a 20 megapixel sensor which doesn't sound like a lot, but that's still like over 5,000 pixels like width wise, which is more than enough for me. Cause I just really, really I'm just posting on like social media or I'm doing stuff for like websites. The other camera that I shoot with is actually doing the overhead right now. Hi. And that is the 5D Mark IV. This was the first uh, professional camera that I bought. It's great, it's definitely dated, but it definitely works well as a backup camera. It's fine for an overhead rig. Also, the 5Ds are still really expensive for some reason. They're still selling for like $2,500, which you can get an R6 for the same money. I don't know why you wouldn't just get the R6. Moving on to probably people's, well, my personal favorite of these videos, lenses. If you want a cool, unique look or a different, just a different look, Lenses are the ultimate way to achieve that. You could have a Canon T3i, which is what I started on, with the best lens in the world, and then you can have an R5 with a kit lens. And I guarantee you, the T3i will probably look better. Well, the R5, no, it probably will look better. That, that would be a fun test, actually. I use EF lenses, even though I'm shooting with a R6 that has an RF mount, and I just use the adapters. Over the past, like, two years, I've invested a lot of money in EF glass, and I just, I can't bring myself to completely switch it and go to the RF mount glass and they're really freaking expensive, like really expensive. I hear they're amazing though, so that's good. But these honestly, they get they do the job perfectly for me and I haven't noticed a loss in like autofocus quality. The glass is amazing, but I use these adapters here. They're the, uh, the, the Canon RF to EF adapters. This one, they have little drop-in filters, which is pretty cool. I think this is the main reason why I haven't switched to RF glass is because having your filters behind the lens is, it, it, it feels like you're using like a C200 or a, or a C70 or a C300. It's insane. It's just, it feels like built-in NDs on a mirrorless camera. And being able to switch lenses and not have to like unscrew something off the front and then screw it on again, and then drop it, and then cry because you broke a filter, is the most amazing thing of all time. The first lens that I keep in my bag and I bring everywhere is the Canon 24 millimeter 1.4 Mark II. I bought this thing last year, and I don't know why I waited so long. I was kind of skeptical on it. I was like, oh, it's just a 24 millimeter, whatever. I have my 24 to 72 a. I don't really need it. And I just kept hearing about how awesome this lens was, and I and then so I found. I found actually, I found one for a really good deal. I think it was on OfferUp. And it still had the warranty and everything. And I was like, all right. So I took a leap on it. 
and it lives in my bag now. I do not take this thing out. I use this thing for everything, and it is the perfect companion for gimbal work. And you get that 1.4, so you can be wide, but still have that like blurred background. Insane. Love this lens. They need to make an RF version. The next lens that I use is the Canon 85mm 1.4 IS. This is probably one of my favorite lenses now. It is ridiculous. This thing hasn't left my camera bag since I got it. The depth of field you get at 1.4 with 85 millimeters, like this thing basically replaced my 70 to 200. I don't really bring that anywhere unless I'm going on like a long trip. I can bring one lens, which is much smaller. It actually weighs about the same. It's a chonky one. And next up, 24 to 70 f 2.8. This is the Tamron SP. It's a 24 to 70 2 8 and it's image stabilized, which I think is pretty, pretty awesome. Autofocus is pretty good. Um, the rubber ring is starting to come off a little bit, but to be expected after using it in Arizona and Florida. But I've actually been trying to get away from using this lens and having it in my bag because I feel like it's always the fallback. Oh, I, just, I can't be bothered today. I'll just use the 24 to 70. It does everything. I'm trying to get away from it and use something, use more creative lenses like the 24 and the 85. Even though I could pretty much replace the, the 24 and the 85 with just this lens, um, there's just something about like primes. The last lens that I keep with me, it's the most money I've spent on a lens to date, but it is so worth the price. And that is the 16 to 35 2.8 uh, version three. This thing lives in my camera bag. I use it every single day for every shoot, whether it's photo or video. This just has that crazy range from 16, which is crazy wide to 35, which you can use for a lot more like travel and a little bit of portrait. Moving on to the film camera that I keep in my bag is the Canon AE-1 program. I have recently gotten into shooting film a lot. It has a built-in light meter, which is super handy. And the lens that I keep on this thing is a Canon FL 58 1.2. This lens is from like 1964 or something like that, or 68, it's probably 68. Shooting film is so much fun and I can't wait to start making some film videos for this channel. Also, if you've never heard the sound of a film camera, it is the most satisfying thing in the world. Moving on to audio tools. If I zoom out, the mic that's <laughs> recording me right now is the Rode VideoMic Pro Plus. It turns on and off when you turn your camera on. For that reason alone, plus the audio quality. Along with that, I use these little guys. The Rode Wireless Goes. You just clip one onto the camera, plug it in, clip one onto your subject, or you plug it in, use it as a lapel. Um, they're just super handy for like, on the go, on the run, interview style. For on the go lighting, None other than the Aperture MC. I have two of them in the background, these orange lights you can see right here. I just realized my practical's not on. Is that better? Full RGB, they have effects. You can, you can sync them to your phone and control them all at once, because Aperture, I think every, every light I own is an Aperture product. Oh no, that one's not. That one's a GVM a RGB panel that I found on Amazon. Moving on to the other half of photo and video, editing, and I use a 2019 uh, 27 inch iMac. It's fully specced out, it has the like quad core i9 with 64 gigs of RAM. It is an absolute beast, but I cannot wait for the M1 version of this thing. And then for editing on the go, I actually just got it today, and that is the 13 inch M1 MacBook Pro. I've already edited a video on it, exporting. The fans didn't even kick up, which is ridiculous because my iMac sounds like it's gonna take flight whenever that happens. Okay. So far, this thing absolutely lives up to the hype, but I've had it for less than 24 hours. Apparently, these are the only computers uh, that can handle the 10-bit 4K footage that comes out of this R6 and the R5 and the A7S III. Um, I have yet to test that out. The video I edited earlier was 1080p, but I'm very excited to see how this thing handles the 10-bit footage because that iMac basically explodes every time it sees one of those files. Moving on to accessories. I have this little, I don't know what it's called. It's a little SD card holder. All my SD cards live in here. I have two pro grade cards in the R6 right now, the uh, V90 cards. And then I've got one of these uh, Sony Tough cards that are stupidly expensive, but they, they work. I've heard of some people having some, some issues with these cards. People are having trouble with their A7S threes, not working with these cards which is kind of ironic because they're both Sony. Uh, got, got one of these little blowers. You should always have one of these in your bag. And then I've also got a little Zeiss cleaning kit. Great for just wiping little smudges off and stuff. Hard drives, crazy important. 
This is a Samsung T7 drive. I keep this in my bag and I use it for any current projects that I'm working on. Crazy fast, really easy to edit off of. Uh, it, it's a solid state drive. This is the one terabyte one, um, but solid state drive, you don't have to worry about it going bad. You can like throw it off a bridge. Don't do that, it probably won't. It probably won't survive that. And then when I'm done with the project, I'll switch it on to, I have a bunch of these. These are spinny drives, they're not solid state, uh, but they're much cheaper. Uh, this is a five terabyte and it costs less than this one terabyte Samsung drive. Other than that, um, big old pack of batteries because you can never have too many batteries. Ibuprofen caplets um, because headaches and headaches suck. And then chapstick because nobody likes having chapped lips. And that is what I keep in my camera bag on a regular basis. If you like this video, please drop a like, subscribe, leave a comment. I've been making some stuff on TikTok, trying to transition over to YouTube. Um, because a minute's not enough for most for most of the ideas that are floating around in my head. But anyway, thank you so much for tuning in. It really means a lot. And I will see you in the next one.